Uh, yeah, the players of the game or players of the week. Um, the special team scout of the week was Michael Manns. The player of the game was Matt Wogan, just doing a great job of, of uh, making uh, those balls unreturnable. Offensively, the scout was Ivan, Ivan Failhaber. Uh, we had two players of the game, Johnny Munt, who did a great job in the, in the passing game and the, and the run game. And then Justin Herbert just uh, made a ton of plays and, and really gutted it out with, with a, a little, uh, little something going on there. Uh, and then defensively, uh, two players of the game, Justin Hollins and TJ Daniel. Honorable mention there to uh, Johnny Reagan as well. And then the, the uh, scout of the week was uh, Connor Berggren from uh, up in West Lynn. Okay. Questions. Did you read the Pharaoh Brown story, and did you think it was fair? I did not read it. I've I've heard about it, and yeah, there's not not anything there to to really comment on. Um, can you discuss whether there was any internal discipline for Pharaoh? As I just said, I don't think there's anything there to comment on. The only, I guess, the only comment I would have is is uh, you know Matt Wogan. And Farrell Brown are extremely close teammates, and uh, according to Matt Wogan, extremely close. So uh, the rest of it, you know, nothing else to to get into. Appreciate it. When you go back and you look at the game tape uh, from last night, what was on on offense? What was able to get you guys or keep you going? That especially in that fourth quarter, that. Utah, you score, Utah scores. Mm -hmm. You guys were able to answer whenever they came back at you. I think it was a combination of things. In the first half, um, you know, had uh, had an opportunity there on that fourth down to, to make a play. You know, it's it's there, and we're kind of uh, just m misfitting the run game uh, from from an aiming point uh, perspective. Uh, and and then you know that that kind of cascades into you know a drive continuing or, or stopping obviously um, but I thought we complemented one another again better in the second half obviously um, <laughs> it was it was back and forth though right with uh, a big punt return and then a crazy punt return great defense and then not, you know giving up a touchdown but but everybody answered the bell uh, uh, in the first half uh, off offensively in particular had some plays there to be made and just didn't make them. You got to give them credit for that too. You mentioned an honorable mention for player of the week for Johnny Munt defensive, or excuse me, for Johnny Reagan defensively. Just how big has his leadership been? And since coming back from, from injury, I mean, how big has he been with the defense? It, it's it's really big. You know, obviously him as a, as a leader, he's a, a voice uh, that a lot of guys respect um, and listen to and just to, to be out there and, and, uh, you know the guys that are that are hurt. They always try to you know like Devin's done a great job. Some of these other guys have done a great job of trying to inject themselves into the in, in you know as a as a leader in that role. But it's it's difficult you know when you're not putting your play behind it. Uh, and so that 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 was big. And uh, other guys are starting to play faster. Jimmy Swain's played faster. Jalen Jelks played uh, you know his best game. A guy that we've been without for for you know a good chunk of the season. So uh, again, hopefully it's a a snowball. And we've been talking about for weeks now about how banged up the defensive line is. And uh, what can you say about the young guys? Have they been able to step up and how the defensive line played against Utah and uh, have looked improved the last couple of weeks? Um, better, you know, better. Um, still kind of in and out. Uh, we don't know um, – 100%, 100% officially on, on Rex Manu. Might have something later this week, uh, unfortunately, on him. Um, but uh, it's it's just a battle of attrition in there right now. And I thought they really, you know, battled against a very good veteran offensive line. Uh, but, yeah, a bunch of young guys in there, whether it's Wayne Kirby, Gary Baker, uh, Jalen, Justin, Justin playing his, his best game. Uh, TJ Daniel did some really good stuff. So, uh, yeah, those guys, they need to, need to stay healthy and get through another game. You mentioned the, the attrition on the defensive line. I was just curious, did the fact that Utah not run a, a hurry up offense help the defense at all? I mean, just in terms of getting winded or anything like that? I don't know. Somebody else asked me that, or I think it was Jerry maybe asked me that or Georgie, uh, post game and, and, um, maybe, you know, I I know our guys. Uh, just in terms of how we practice, that's that's a that's a a big confidence builder for being able to to see personnel groups, uh, see formations, recognize things, and communicate 
uh, uh, from that standpoint. And, and, you know, the altitude isn't really a factor there. With Royce running as well as he did yesterday, it looked like the first time in a couple of weeks that he was getting yards after contact more often than he did maybe in the last few weeks. Um, I talked to a former player, Juan Chedrick, who said that he looks like he's confident, that he's running like Royce of the last couple of years with that extreme level of confidence. Is, is he had to sort of build that back up over the last couple of weeks because he seemed he was gone off injury for a couple of weeks? Um, the last, the last two weeks have been better. Yeah. There, there's still time, you know, he did some, some great, great stuff. Absolutely. Like you're saying, that's, you know, quote unquote old Royce, uh, that, uh, was, was good to see. And then he, he also, you know, left a little meat on the bone a few times in terms of some, some yards that were st- still there. But I thought he, you know, he and Tony both just made a ton of plays, breaking tackles, uh, against a, again, a very good defense. Chantel. Hey, Mark. Uh, Justin's had a pretty insane month and a half for any freshman in college. For you, what kind of sticks out about the last um, the last month and a half for him? Um, he's he's doing a pretty good job of of just again of awareness and and main, maintaining his confidence. He you know he had a couple plays that that kind of. Um, we left out there, which again, uh, you know, Tom Brady's going to leave a couple plays out there occasionally, just in terms of a, a read or a throw. Um, but but just to, as a as a young guy in that venue and, and having to to kind of counter punch and counter punch and counter punch, uh, being banged up uh, against that team, I thought was very encouraging. Uh, and again, you know, like you said, throughout the month and month and whatever. Um, you know, playing behind some guys that are making some making some mistakes and knowing that's again, we've talked about this before. The quarterback knowing what what is his fault and what isn't his fault is really important. Uh, and then yesterday, I thought he was just just very gutty. You know that he was he was banged up and and uh, and played his tail off. Can follow, I follow up, up on that real quick. Sorry, sorry, Chantel. Go ahead. Sorry, you just mentioned, I guess, knowing what is and isn't your fault as a quarterback. Is that maybe one of the things you learn later on in your career? Or is that something that's more internalized? It happens to everyone at different times. I guess I haven't heard you really mention that, although we've been dealing a lot with Marcus, so I assume he was on a different level. But is that is that different for every quarterback? I think it is. I think it is. Um, the you know, for the quarterback, you have to be, you know, it's kind of like the uh, the corner, get, you know, that gets beat deep. You've got to have instant next play mentality with, with total confidence. And if you, if you think something happened and you're, you, you know, there's any sort of hesitance about it of, of uh, you know, a protection bust and why that happened and you think it's your fault, you're not going to, you know, you don't have that instant confidence. And so uh, just being able to know why it happened how it ha- you know exactly what happened and flush it is a is a great is a huge uh, quality to be a great quarterback and and he's developing that uh he usually you know he usually has good answers for for everything you know you want to be able to do that with your quarterback to have him have him come off and and regurgitate the the plays back to you exactly what happened and some guys you know some guys have a tendency to try to try to fake you out and you know pretend like they know the answer and you can tell in 2 seconds when they don't Andrew? He, yeah, Mark, the, kind of like along the lines with Chantel's question about Justin, Johnny Munt has seemed like he's playing absolutely the best football of his career last month and a half. Is there an easy explanation for why he, he says confidence, but is there anything else you can point to for his kind of really revelatory last six games? <laughs> yeah, I wish, uh, you know, confidence is a, a huge deal. Health, you know, he's been off and on, in and out the last couple of years, um, uh, you know, just wasn't wasn't available for periods of time. But but uh, that guy's playing really, really well. Had a couple NFL scouts asking about him last week, and it was kind of the, kind of the same thing you said. What, what happened? I don't know if there's... Uh, you know any magic elixir or anything involved um but but he's he's really playing well with uh, with regard to the the two calls that were kind of talked about a lot yesterday with the targeting on Charles and the punt return touchdown did you request or anyone from Google request any kind of clarification from the league office today and have you had any conversations about kind of what they saw that maybe you didn't or vice versa on those two plays I I haven't um 
I might, I don't know. I could, I could tell you what the answer is going to be I'm verbatim. Um, but, uh, uh, I might. How's that for an answer? Anything else, Andrew? No. Nope. Chantel? No, I'm good. Thank you. As we look forward to this week and the game against Oregon State, there is the the whole question of five and seven teams are invited to bowl games in that case. Um, is that a narrative you expect to use or has it already been used um, even after that game? Uh, I heard a couple guys talking about that and, and uh, you know, there's there's a lot of, again, the biggest <laughs> biggest part of any of that is getting getting to five. And the best way you do that is 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 recover from this one. And and you know we've already obviously gotten a, a great advanced look on on Oregon State, who's playing really well right now. Uh, dominated dominated Arizona last night. Um, and and so again, the only thing that matters is is how we prepare for tomorrow. Anything else? Thank you.